All right, hello everybody. I think I got everything going. My uh, camera person is bungee jumping in Patagonia right now, so I got to do everything by myself. You know how that goes. Anyway, so uh, we're going to be calling this one taking off the tinfoil hat on one star reviews. So I've been trying to mature and grow as a human being as time has been going on. And I've been looking at these one star reviews and I think I'm ready to take off my tinfoil hat and put on a much smaller tinfoil hat. Anyway, uh, so I've been going over these one star reviews and um, I think I'm going to break them into three basic categories and two of them being very similar. We have the worst first category and I'm thinking about my own life and, you know, I've been to college, I've been to high school, I've taken biology, I've taken physics, auto shop, metal shop, wood shop, a lot of different classes over the years. I've been in Boy Scouts. But in all those years of education, I never had the opportunity to make an oil lamp. So I'm going to readjust the shot here so you can actually see the oil lamp that we are doing. So this is going to be kind of a couple part series. Uh, so let's go back to the one stars. Uh, I had a whole bunch of one stars and I will break them into three categories. There is the first category of people who've just never had the opportunity to make an oil lamp themselves. And what you're looking at here, this is olive oil, and I'm using a cotton wick with olive oil. And I think there's just a lack of experience of an ability to make one star or to make uh, oil lamps. Um, I hadn't, before I started selling wick, I'd never made an oil lamp before. And I think most other people probably out there who are highly educated have never, in all their highly educated life, have never had the opportunity to make what I'll call a uh, 5000 BC technology in action. So wicks are very ancient. We've had electricity for quite a while. And uh, I think all of us just have zero need to make an oil lamp in general, unless we're doing it for fun or as an emergency preparedness. So uh, one category of one star, I think is definitely people who just have not had the opportunity. You'll make a lamp that looks exactly like this. You have wick, you have your fluid, you have wick going into the fluid, and you think everything is fine. You filled it up to about here. That feels like it's good. Why not, right? But what you actually see here is I marked off, that's one inch, two inch, three inch, four inch. This is five inches if you only filled it up to the widest part of, let's say this was a wine bottle. This neck part right here alone could be nine inches, six inches at the minimum, nine inches probably most likely. This one has a four inch neck and it's just a little soda bottle. So what I've done is I marked off, we're at about five inches. Uh, what I've read online is that six inches is the maximum and that was with a half inch wick which would fill the entire mouth of the bottle. So I am thinking there's every chance that we do not have enough oil. And just so you know, this is probably not going to work. We need to fill it up with more oil, I think. So down here is six inches and we are currently a little below five, but I have not primed it. I've kind of dipped the wick. I went sideways so that it could absorb some oil. And the last thing we are gonna do is pour some oil down the top. So I said there's three categories of these. The other category would be, I had a reviewer, uh, we'll call, the person N, because their first name started with an N. And it was a lady who has a oil stone lamp company. So she makes uh, rock candles out of granite or something. And I'll call this a second category. This is a person who runs a professional organization who's had experience making lamps, who even though she had experience making lamps was still not quite making it correct and left me a one star, which was kind of weird. And I did a lot of thinking about that one. And I looked actually on her Facebook page and I looked how she was using the product. And even though she had a professional company, she wasn't making lamps correctly, which was really surprising to me because you would take 
that is somebody who had experience and should know how to make a lamp. But what was she doing? She would run, she would sell these uh, rock candles at trade shows, you know, or not trade shows, uh, kind of farmer's markets. And so what she was doing was she was pulling her wick. It was a one eighth. This is a three sixteenth pulling her one eighth inch wick about this high up out of the stone uh, rock lamp, rock, rock candle that she had made. And she had this much wick showing and was lighting it. And it was making a fire like this that she described as psycho, meaning I guess it probably went up, down, left, right, all over the place and never settled down to a nice flame. But honestly, that's not using the product correctly because really you should have almost no wick showing. So that was the second kind of one star. And then the third kind of one star are what I genuinely feel based on the wording, uh, the rapid frequency of them. And, and a few other factors. I think those were genuinely, unfortunately, people who were leaving one stars that were not genuine, that they had been paid to leave. How would you know that? There was one person who placed an order for WIC and one minute later placed a second order for WIC, returned both of them, left a verbal one star on one and a one star with no review on the other. And it was a flat cotton wick meant for like a, a kerosene lamp. And those just work. <laughs> Nothing much to say about that except it just works. So here we're ready. Um, I think I have enough. I always feel like you can never, especially when you have five inches between the top and the bottom, I almost feel like you can never quite put enough down the top to make sure it is properly primed. So... Step number one. So what am I going to do? I'm realizing that a lot of it is just none of us have had the opportunity to make oil lamps. So I'm going to do my best to try to do a series of education videos for all of us because I'm learning too. I, I'm not an expert by any means. Uh, I've done a few hours of videos over the last couple of years, but I'm always learning. So here we have olive oil. Olive oil is a very tricky fuel. Um, I would say unless you're using it for a religious purpose or perhaps... Uh, I had just had a customer. The reason I'm doing this one specifically is because a customer has um, very strong uh, smell allergies, I guess you would, or very sensitive sense of smell. And most lamp oil just does not do well with her. So she was hoping that she could do a natural oil and that would do better. So without further ado, let's see what's going to happen. I think there's every chance that this one will not work. So my new endeavor is going to be to educate as much as possible so that we can eliminate the first two varieties of one star, which is all of us have never had an opportunity to make an oil lamp. You know, we've all grown up with electricity. We've all grown up with, you know, I'm pretty old. So I remember incandescent bulbs that worked off of a filament and then we've gone to fluorescent and uh, LED now. And we very rarely have a chance to do this. So without further ado, so olive oil is a high heat cooking fuel. I think I'm going to have a heck of a time using a standard lighter to get this going. What I would recommend is you put the drops down, you let it settle. You don't want it to be glistening wet with fuel because that's going to be a lot of olive oil to get set on fire. If I'm unable to do it with the lighter, I know for sure my creme brulee torch is going to work beautifully. So let's see what's going to happen. You know, it's all uh, experiment. And you see, <laughs> olive oil is incredibly flame proof. But watch what we're going to do. Hey, there we go. <laughs> when in doubt, use a welding torch. So why do I not like to use olive oil? You can see it's almost fireproof. There's a reason you use it for high heat cooking. Uh, so... If you're going to be using a standard lighter, be prepared to hold it there. And I think it's almost dangerous because it's probably going to have to be held there so long that this metal part is going to be piping hot and you're going to burn your fingers while you're holding the lighter to it. So as you can see, though, once you get it lit, olive oil works beautifully. The problem is getting it lit. It is very hard to get lit. Let me make sure we've got two live streams going simultaneously. We do 
So let's do some safety stuff. I always have two fire extinguishers just off camera. This is for educational purposes. I do not recommend you do this at home. This is only for testing. So I'm just trying to show here that the product works first of all. Um, this is the 316s. I call it Turbo Air Core. I call it Turbo Air Core because it is actually hollow on the inside. There's a very fine hole in the center. We are currently pulling one, two, three, four, five inches against gravity. So I'm going to say my 316 turbo air core, we're going to need to give it another minute or two because it very well could be pulling fuel from here down to about here and just drying out the wick and then eventually this will go out. So we'll know if after a couple minutes we're still lit that it is actually pulling fuel. So... I really would like to find out what is the maximum. I'm going to figure it's down here at six inches. So what I've done is I've marked off one inch increments approximately on the bottle. So you get an idea. This is already five inches down, maybe even a little below five. Um, and we're just going to see for a few minutes, is our flame going to go out? Because you are really at the limits of what a what a wick can do it's a passive pump it's pulling up fluid against gravity all this height if you think of your standard uh, wax candle the wax and the fire are right at the same level if you think of a um, your standard kerosene lamp kerosene lamp has a tremendous bowl at the bottom then the wick and then most of the lamp is actually the glass hood um, so again, a kerosene lamp has the fuel very close to the fire. I think we are actually going to go out based on it going down like this. I don't think we are pulling enough fuel. So what are we going to do? We're going to let this go, see if it recovers, but I'm going to say that it is unable to pull five inches of fuel. So it is very important in your lamps that you fill your fuel to the very top. So I'm going to say this is starving for fuel. Let's see if I can actually... We'll do some... Do not do this at home. I don't think I'm going to be able to do that. I was hoping I could maybe... See if we can lift this up out of the way. Yeah, you know, I'm going to have to fill this up because I'm going to need a few squirts of this to actually get it to go all the way, but you can see instantly, just getting some liquid on the wick was enough to get the flame back up. So let's, we're gonna fill in more fuel and we're gonna go up to the next inch mark. So we know for a fact that five inches is too much. And I'm just off, off camera here making a tremendous mess, so don't worry about me. I'll be over in a second after I clean up my mess. All right, I've made a tremendous mess of the counter over there. Refilling this, so we'll do this a few more times until we are able to so I want to get to the one, two, three, four inch mark and see how that is going to do.
I think I'm actually going to have to add a little bit more. So we will bring this back around and you're going to be amazed. It's actually still going. So let me go ahead and I'm going to fill a little bit more because we know for a fact that five inches down is too, too far down for sure. So we're at one, two, three, almost four inch level. I want to raise it up to four inches and we might even have to go a little higher. But my point that I'm trying to show is that when you make a lamp, you have to fill basically to the top. Start with your fuel all the way at the top. And I think things are going to work much better. Let me go ahead and make a bigger mess and fill this up one more time. Should have grabbed a bigger squeeze bottle is my problem. Okay, so we still have flame. It is definitely not as impressive as it was. So let's see. I think I'm almost just going to blow it out. We'll let it cool down for a second. I'm going to pull up a little more wick. So let's do that. We'll use this. All of this is incredibly hot. You're going to burn yourself terribly if you don't use something like a little metal implement. You do not want to touch that for an extended period of time because it is hot. You will burn yourself. Guaranteed. So I'm going to get this to the 4-inch level, and we're going to see how it performs at the 4-inch level. Because five inches is definitely too far of free airspace to pull fuel. So this is why we're doing live testing. I'm not pulling any punches. It's working or it's not working. I'm confident we can get it working once we fill it enough with fuel. So we are going to see how hot that is still. That's still very hot. Probably gonna have to use some sort of an implement to get that to go a little further. You know what? Since we already have it here and it's already there, we're here, it's there, everybody's here together. Let's see if it'll just light up. I think I'm going to have to use a creme brulee torch. Yes. Creme brulee torch. Okay, so like I said, I think I'm going to have to advance the wick a little bit. I don't think I had enough showing. But let's give this a second, let it settle in, and we'll see what happens. I think I'm going to have to advance about another eighth of an inch of wick to get a good size, good size flame going. So let's see, I'm going to blow it out, I'm going to use paper towel as a hot mitt, and I'm going to try to see how we want to do this, just need to shove some more wick inside. Let's see. That's still pretty hot. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to use that to hold. 
And now I can push while twisting. And again, all of this is very hot, so don't do this. I'm just doing a live stream, so I have to kind of do it in a condensed way. So that's going to be too much wick showing, but we'll put it down a little bit more maybe. Okay. So that's still a little bit too much wick. It's going to make probably a bigger flame than you'd like, but let's go ahead and see what happens. Why is that not working? There we go. All right, flame. All right, that's burning. Start doing some cleanup while we're letting that settle down. So we are currently at one, two, three, four inches of fuel. What have we done? We've added one extra inch of fuel because five inches of free air space is too much, certainly for olive oil. Now other fuels, maybe paraffin lamp oil might be able to go down five inches. And I think as the thicker your wick is, the more you'll be able to go down. And if this doesn't work, we're gonna put it here. And I think certainly by here or here, we're gonna have plenty of fuel and it'll burn okay because it already looks like we're not doing okay, huh? Yeah. Olive oil is a tricky fuel. I definitely like using paraffin lamp oil much more. It burns fantastically well. We're currently using, let's see, let me grab the bottle. We're currently running robust extra virgin olive oil. And you can see olive oil does not want to work very well, does it? So you know what we do? We're going to go ahead and fill it up more. All right. So let me get the bottle back here. We will do more testing. All right. So of course it's not going to work quite perfectly, right? Because that that would be too convenient for a live stream. So I think what we might actually do also is we might end up tri trimming the wick a little bit. So we will fill to the next inch level. Okay, I think we need to put just a, just a tad more in and we will be ready to start at the next level. Okay, we're also going to need to trim it, give it some clean wick. So we are going to
there we go. So we're now one, two, three inches of airspace, and let's see how that performs. So what am I going to want to do? We will... Pull wick up. Ah, that's funny. This kitchen scissors is not working very well for me. There we go. Okay, we have clean wick now. Let's get that in there a little bit. We're going to prime our wick to make sure it is wet from top to bottom. Let that soak in a little bit. Dry. Excess wick or excess fuel. We'll let that soak for a split second and we will light it up. All right. The test continues. Well, we'll give it a minute or two, see what happens. Well, that's looking good so far. It's only increasing in size, not decreasing. That's good. So olive oil is a very tricky fuel. Like I said, um, I would think I would only use it if I was using it for um, certain religions uh, use olive oil in their ceremony um, as an emergency fuel. Uh, but in general, I would much rather use something like pure paraffin lamp oil. Burns much better, not as thick. Uh, from my experience in my copper lamps that I've made, uh, olive oil cannot be pulled up as far as paraffin lamp oil. So... We are looking good so far. We're going to let this run for another minute. I'm going to start cleaning up the mess on the counter while we're watching this burn. So the smell is a nice pleasant smell. I can definitely see why you might want to use this instead of other fuels. Huh? It's not looking good. I'm about ready to uh, put olive oil as not an acceptable fuel. I have used it before in copper lamps, and it would burn for almost almost a half hour. It could be that's just what we're going to get out of it. But I think we might um, 
might go ahead and go up to the next level and see how well it performs when it has only two inches of free airspace. Kind of interesting. Definitely does not do as well as paraffin. If you remember the other videos we've done, paraffin lamp oil works much better. So yeah, I don't know about olive oil. It's a tough fuel for sure. Um, if you look at some of my older testing videos, you'll see I have made a copper lamp. Um, it was a copper menorah that I put together, and that would work much better with paraffin than olive oil. So we still have a fire. It's very sad. I'm curious, one way to test is the fire going out because we're starved for fuel. Let's give it a little bit of extra olive oil to burn and see what happens. Yeah, it comes up a little bit. So our problem could definitely be pulling olive oil three inches is difficult, which would make sense. You think you, uh, you know, you dip something like a paper towel into olive oil and it's not going to pull up three inches against gravity. It'll, it'll soak the bottom inch of it. So we're going to blow this out because clearly by adding more oil, we bought the flame back. So it is starving for fuel at three inches. So I think what we do is we blow this out. We're going to add an inch of fuel. Let me get the fuel bottle prepared for the next level. We'll see how long this does on a couple of drops of fuel that I added. I think we need to go to the next level. That's interesting. Let's let that run for a second. That sure perked right back up, didn't it? I wonder if almost we didn't have a good enough prime that second time that I did it. And maybe adding a couple extra drops of fuel. So how does this work? You cannot have any dry air airspace in the wick. It has to be wet from top to bottom, otherwise the pump doesn't work. So I literally only dropped two or three drops of oil down in there, and it's still going. So let's go ahead and let that, let's let that continue. See if it uh, dies down again to nothing, in which case then we're going to add an extra inch of fuel. But it's possible when I last cut that, I didn't prime it properly. I kind of did that a little bit on the quick side. But dropping just a couple inches of, or a couple drops of fuel, you wet it down the wick. So it has to be wet from top to bottom, kind of like uh, if you're siphoning something, if you have any air in the siphon, it's not really going to work. So you have to remove all the air, and then it'll allow it to begin pulling. But if you have dry spot somewhere, it's going to stop at the dry spot, and then it'll go out. So, yeah, that's interesting. We're burning. It's not the most impressive flame in the world, and I would say it's starting to die down again. So I think we're going to add that extra inch of fuel and see what happens. So let's get this... out of the way. Make it this way I can actually see.
Okay. We'll make sure we are wet. If that doesn't work well, we will trim and advance the wick, but I, I think we're just going to go ahead and go for it. We are now one, two inches. Yeah, we might have to trim and advance the wick. Let's see what happens. Yeah, it might have just been wet with fuel. Like I said, olive oil is a tough fuel to get going. There's a reason people use it in high heat cooking because it doesn't burn very easily. So you're basically using an inflammable fuel as fuel. <laughs> yeah, that's looking pretty good. Let's see if it's going to continue. Definitely going to say I don't really like this working well as a fuel. You have to fill it too close to the top, I think. I think if we were using paraffin lamp oil, based on my other testing, you could get away with it being down between here and here, easily an extra inch or two. Could be because, uh, you know, olive oil is incredibly thick compared to um, a fuel such as paraffin lamp oil, which is much closer to like, uh, um, like a rubbing alcohol consistency, very fluid, very thin whereas olive oil is a pretty thick fuel, probably harder to pull. So we're gonna let this go. It's a nice size flame. We'll see if maybe we can do some surgery here. Try to grab it, pull it up a little bit. Don't try this at home. Yeah, I definitely like a little extra wick. We'll see uh, how that does as it burns down. You know what I'll definitely say about paraffin lamp oil too is it does a much more efficient job with the wick. If you'll remember my um, proving the burning bush miracle, uh, I had pulled up about this high and the way the paraffin lamp oil was working, only the tip was burning, and then everything below the tip was actually still cotton colored, whereas this one instantly singed the cotton. So it's amazing to see the different kinds of fuels. I'm, I'm really glad we did this experiment because we're able to see, last time when I was doing the, um, the burning bush miracle video, the cotton, the same cotton wick, you could see cotton all the way down and only the tip was getting charred or is this one not so much interesting I'm almost ready to go all the way up to here and then in general say I would not use olive oil so what we can try doing we can try a 1 8 inch wick um, that might be what I would try next. This is the hollow core. Uh, every wick has different characteristics. So I think the last thing we will do is we will fill it up one more inch of fuel. And then I'm almost going to poke around and see maybe I have some one eighth somewhere. Because this is definitely not happy. Yeah. Let me top this back up. We're going to go up one more inch. So I almost think my next video, we are going to do olive oil side by side with paraffin lamp oil.
fact, I have paraffin lamp oil lamps right outside. You might go ahead and do that. Do a side by side. So let me go grab some of our old testing lamps that we've been using before. You remember these from our last video. All right, so I think what we need to do is bring some different fuels right next to it. So what do we have here? We're gonna go ahead and say olive oil, you're not working very well for us. You're making us look bad. Olive oil's trying to make us look bad. That's not good. So here we have this is what we used in some of our other videos. I put a cap on it. Let's go ahead and shake it up just so we make sure it's fully primed. Uh, I think we're going to try just try to bring that up a little bit. Let's see what happens here. So this is our paraffin lamp oil. We have another one here. This was used with paraffin lamp oil. It's kind of all evaporated because these are sitting outside all summer. And you can take a look at that. Oops. Are we not? Thank you. 